my dudes what's happening man this is trent and today i want to talk to you about edge contrast and adding a little bit of texture to your work to get a little bit more of an organic feel now if you work with photoshop or some digital drawing tools you might end up with things that uh, brush strokes that kind of look a little bit like this where it's kind of like the the edge uh, of the brush is very visible and it ends up kind of feeling a little bit kind of just hard edged. And you, if you know much about painting, you know that edge contrast can play a big role in where the viewer is looking at, what the focal point of your image in and is. And this is something that's used in photography as well. So if the background is blurred, for instance, the, the focal point, the character, the person in the shot, if they're really uh, crisp, and have harder edges and stronger contrast, edge contrast, it'll pop out. There's other ways to do contrast from color to uh, uh, various other techniques that I won't dig into. I just want to talk about a few ways that you can take these rigid kind of uh, digital brush strokes and really make them look more organic and natural, like maybe what you'd see on an oil painting or just, just a few different techniques that'll make your pieces look a little bit more organic and more painted and a little less rigid and photoshoppy. But I'm going to start out here. Uh, first of all, I want to give you a clear example of what I'm talking about. So sometimes you'll see things like um, when you're blending, for instance, if you use something like a hard round or a, a hard edged brush with your uh, pressure set to opacity, you're going to end up with a lot of these kind of things where it sort of feels like it's a little bit of a hard edge and you might want to soften that. By softening the edge contrast on your background elements, you're going to make everything in the foreground actually a lot more clear. Just like, as I mentioned, like a photograph, it'll bring attention to your focal point, so to speak. So technique number one is going to require that you open up your brush panel and just to make sure that you're on the same page with me here, so to speak, and go down to brush and then it'll open up something that looks like this. Go down to transfer and make sure that your control is set to pen pressure. What that means is that uh, if I have uh, this set to black and white and if I lightly press it's a very little low percentage of opacity as I press harder it gets harder this is pretty basic stuff most people who use Photoshop know this but what you do is uh, you uh, hold down the option key and you dab you give it a little dab dab and then you uh, you gently press to soften out your transitions and this is one way to do it but you're still gonna have you're gonna have to do a lot of these brush strokes to really smooth that out a couple of other things that you can do to to get this soften your uh, brush strokes is that you could use filters so there are a number of filters that I use one a big one is the noise median tool or the noise median filter and you'll notice that what that does is it sort of just softens everything. I mean, you get these very flowy, smudgy, kind of almost oil brush kind of effects. And that can create a really nice color blending if you're looking around on your image while you're previewing it. And you'll notice how if you, like for instance, if this is a background element of my painting, it could be really nice, especially if you use a lot of photo bashing, but you want it to look more painted, for instance, you could go in and actually just set it to like a two. And you see how if I switch that on and off, if you're watching a high-res version of this video, you can really see the difference. Basically, by running that filter over the top and then erasing out everything that you want to be in focus, you'll end up where uh, the the viewer will, their eye will go to the thing that's in focus, and it'll all the other stuff will be like secondary, but it'll still it'll still lend itself to the scene very well as long as your colors and values are interesting in those areas. You'll see I'm doing an extreme version of it here, but you'll see how like the character really pops out because he's using that strong edge contrast. While we're here, I wanna cover one more filter called oil paint. So if you go down to stylize uh, filter and then stylize and then oil paint. Now make sure again, that this is on the layer where everything's like flattened onto it. And I just do it on a copied layer. But if you do that oil layer effect, you can get some really neat, I mean, it, it basically smooths out and smears all of your brush strokes together. So you get this super flowy kind of interesting effect and you can lower that or strengthen it depending on how intense you want your oils to look. I actually prefer this one a lot more than, than uh, some of the other ones because it makes it look like your lines are super confident, and especially if you have super flowy elements within your painting. Since that's on its own layer, you can just erase out everything you want to be crisp and clean. 
These aren't the focal point elements, but I feel like they're important for us to see the details on them. So like Rin's face here, it's okay if some of the background elements fade and blur a little bit. There was a, in the early 2000s, there was a big stigma with filters. Uh, people had a real big stink about it. And you know, that's okay too. If you wanna learn more traditional methods, and I, I won't say that you shouldn't, you know, I know oil painters that just love doing oil paints and, and they spend two weeks on every painting and they're fine with that and they make good money doing it and that's that's cool. But I'm a digital artist working in the modern era on stuff that I wanna do as many paintings as I can. I gotta do them fast. So I'm gonna use every inch of the tool that I've got. If I found a way to click a button that said auto paint this thing just from my imagination, I'd use that, you know? But don't you dare tell me that I can't. You know, sometimes it's the it's the guys that criticize the hell out of people who use the tools, like use the legendary Photoshop tricks, you know, that I have. And they'll they'll say, oh, that's cheating or something like that. But those are usually the guys who aren't getting paid and they're frustrated. Moving right along, there are a few others that I want to cover. There is, of course, the blur tool. This one's just like, um, I don't think it's called the blur tool. But this one just adds a blur to everything, but I don't like it. I actually really don't like it. I've never used this at all. So let's just move right along to the most gorgeous brush ever made. The mixer brush is gorgeous. Mixer brush is biggity bomb. So here's the cool thing about mixer brush. First of all, make sure all of what you're painting on is on that one layer. Mixer brush might be your one stop solution to all of this, all of your hard edged brush uh, problems, because what it does is it effectively is the most blendery. Uh, it changes the way that colors blend in the algorithm. Allogorithm. I was watching Angry Joe. He called it an allogorithm. I thought that was really funny. Uh, but what's cool about this one is like, check it out. If you use a texture, oh my, what, what? Oh my God, that's beautiful, right? Look at all these smeary, smudgy, most organic, gorgeous, beautiful brush strokes that you can get from just a noisy brush. And oh my God, it's like the most natural looking blend of brushes. Look at the contrast there. This looks like it was spattered in oil paints on a canvas. This looks like it was done in a digital Photoshop brush or br Photoshop canvas. So I highly recommend that you use the mixer brush tool. You can of course dig into all kinds of brushes, whatever you've got, you know. Uh, the thing I want to mention about the mixer uh, tool is that I know artists who get very sloppy with their just laying down color flats and chunks of, of color with hard rigid lines and then they end up doing the whole painting with the mixer brush and uh, that, that gets a very organic natural media looking uh, painting by the time they're done, just smearing colors around. Uh, if you're wondering what this painting is for, I'm working on a new novel uh, with uh, a writer by the name of Chris Krubeck. Uh, he's helping me out and we're co-writing it together. It's called The Secrets of Kung Fulio. And this is going to be a Twilight Monk novel that's going to be coming out this year. I'm still working on it and I should have some more news on that soon. Man, there are a million different techniques and tricks and things that you can use to make your artwork look a little bit more organic in Photoshop and Sketchbook Pro and many other programs. So I can't cover them all. I wanted to keep this video short and sweet. Hopefully at least some tips uh, helped you out with your own paintings this week. Uh, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. If you want to get all of my brushes, I got them over there on my gum road as well as a ton of other two tutorials have been doing this for a long long time so uh dudes until next time i will catch you all man yonder bond and ciao baby oh yeah do that with some passion baby